Hi. Hello there. I'm David. Same as always. First of all, I want to make it clear that I'm just a student, not a teacher. This YouTube channel is not about teaching English to someone else. This is just to show my own process of English speaking practice. That's the purpose of this channel. I just want to show my uh, practice method. I mean, I just want to show that even elderly person like me who don't use, who doesn't use English in daily lives can learn to speak English. Do I make myself clear? Hi, David. It's great to hear from you again. I like how you're approaching English practice as a way to show your own learning process, especially for someone who might not use it every day. It really shows that anyone can improve, no matter their age or background. You were saying you make yourself. What did you want to say next? Listen carefully. Even if it's just simple conversation without significant learning or meaningful discussions or just uh, mimicking repetition time, I think spending time with you, I mean, spending time with GPT is very, very valuable learning experience. Because I think you never get bored with my repetitive and tedious content. I think always repetition makes perfect. It's very important for me. And I always, uh, and you always treat me very kindly. So I really love, uh, I really love uh, ChatGPT as a conversation partner for my language learning journey. I'm really glad you feel that way. Repetition is definitely key when it comes to learning a new language. And I'm always here to help with that no matter how many times we go over the same things. Your dedication and consistency will pay off. And it's great to hear that you're enjoying our conversations. It's a pleasure to be part of your learning journey. How would you like to practice today? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This video includes everything. I mean, even my mistakes and embarrassed moments. It's not edited to only show the parts where I speak well. It's a full video, including all my mistakes and errors. That's a great approach. Showing everything, including the mistakes and errors, is a very honest way to track your progress. It's also a reminder that making mistakes is a natural part of learning, and by reviewing them, you can improve even more. It takes courage to share the full picture, and it's a helpful method for both you and others to see that learning is never perfect from the start. How do you usually review your mistakes after watching the video? You know, I checked our conversation dialogue in text form after our voice mode, our voice mode ended. Do you understand? I always review our conversation dialogue in text form because you know many Koreans study English studied English for, for over 10 years in school but they couldn't say anything when they meet the foreign even if consistent reading and writing they can't say anything because they don't have any experience to speak in English. So I plan to speak as much as I can possible because I want to learn speaking English. To be stay competitive in the company, I think I need uh, communication skill communication skills not only mean the english 
speaking skill, but also the attitude to interact with someone to interact with someone else to make them satisfied with I completely understand what you're saying. It's great that you review our conversations in text form. It's an excellent way to reinforce what you've learned and identify areas to improve. You're absolutely right that many people focus on reading and writing, but don't practice speaking, which leads to difficulty when they actually need to communicate. By focusing on speaking as much as possible, you're building the practical skills you need for real life situations. And you're also right that communication goes beyond just speaking English. It's about how you engage with others, show confidence, and make them feel understood. It sounds like you're not only improving your language skills, but also developing a strong attitude toward communication, which will definitely help in your work environment. How do you usually practice improving both speaking and communication skills together? You know, I think let's get the most let's get the most of it. I think this time is valuable, very valuable. I mean, spending time with you is very valuable to improve my English communication skills and attitude to interact with someone to make them satisfy uh, their requirement. I mean, you know, I don't have a chance to communicate with uh, someone else living overseas in English because I don't use English regularly in my daily life. I'm a Korean, I'm a native Korean, and you know, I have very few times, like once or twice in a, uh, in a year, to talk with someone living in, uh, overseas who use English as a second language. This time, I make this time to practice my English communication skills to communicate with them. It's a very few chance. I know, I know that. It's a very few chance, but I'm very proud of myself if I can communicate with in with them in English. You're right to feel proud of yourself. Taking the time to practice, even when opportunities to speak English are rare, shows your dedication to improving your skills. The effort you put in now will definitely help you when you get those chances to communicate with people overseas, even if it's only once or twice a year. It's great that you're using this time with me to build up your confidence and communication skills. It's also impressive that you're not just focused on speaking English, but on interacting in a way that meets the needs of the other person. That's such an important skill in any language. The more you practice here, the more natural it will feel when you do get those opportunities. How do you feel after you have those conversations with people from overseas? Do you notice any progress each time? Certainly. I think I did, I, I think I made a lot, of, a lot uh, many tasks, many projects. I made a lot, uh, a lot of project is clear. You know, I think my current communication skill is enough to deal with to deal with uh, someone in right way. I mean. I don't have any uh, major difficulties to to deal with that. 
because my job, I think my job doesn't need very advanced high communication skill. I think my job needs, uh, I think it's enough. My, I mean, my correct English communication skill is enough to deal with my, uh, my job. You know, I, I work for auto, on automotive camera manufacturer. I'm in charge of a quality control department. It sounds like you've made a lot of progress in your communication skills, especially in the context of your job. It's great to hear that your current level of English is enough to handle your responsibilities, particularly in quality control, where clear and effective communication is important. Since your job doesn't require extremely advanced English, it's understandable that you're focusing on maintaining and refining your skills at a practical level, which is perfectly fine. Working for an automotive camera manufacturer and being in charge of quality control must involve a lot of technical communication, right? Even if you don't need advanced English, being able to clearly explain issues or processes is crucial. How do you feel about your ability to communicate technical details in English? Technical details? I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't what you're trying to say. No problem. By technical details, I mean the specific information or explanations related to your job, like describing how the automotive cameras work, discussing quality control issues, or explaining any technical problems with the cameras. Do you find it challenging to talk about those things in English, or do you feel confident explaining those you know, you know, as I told you before, I don't use English regularly in my daily life. So, you know, honestly speaking, I think I don't have challenging, uh, challenging moment like you just described the situation because I really, uh, I rarely have the chance to communicate in English. But someday, I'm telling you, I want to be fluent English because someday. So, like, like, like you said, someday I want to describe and express my opinion and observation to clear my job to clear my project, to make proceed my project without uh, any, any issues or mistakes. I understand completely. Since you don't use English regularly, those challenging moments haven't come up often but it's great that you have the goal to become a fluent speaker. Your ambition to one day express your thoughts, opinions, and observations clearly in English, especially for your job and projects, is a strong motivator. By practicing regularly like you're doing now, you'll definitely get closer to that goal. The more you engage in conversations, the easier it will become to explain things without hesitation or mistakes. How do you feel about practicing technical topics with me in the future? It could help you get more comfortable with that kind of communication. Yes, certainly, absolutely. That's exactly what I want to say. Uh, I started uh, our, uh, I mean, I, I started today's conversation dialogue with specific two files. Can you review my files? One is Excel format, one is just uh, picture format. Do you understand? This is my own GPT's mode. Could you review 
my Excel file and picture file that I uploaded at this morning. I've successfully accessed your Excel file and it contains three sheets, Pyoji, Project Tamil, and Pyongyang Irok. I can help you explore the details within any of these sheets. Do you have a specific section or content you'd like me to review, or should I provide it? Excuse me? Are we there? Excuse me, are you there? I'm amazed. I'm impressed. Yes, I'm here. It looks like my response might have been delayed. I've already started reviewing your Excel file, and I'm about to check the picture file now. Let's continue. Please stop the review my Excel file because I've I opened your picture file. Since I can't show images directly here, you should be able to view it on your end. Let me know if you'd like any specific details or descriptions from the image. I can see my picture on my end. Do you understand? Let's talk about my picture. Great. Since, since you can see the picture on your end, Let's go ahead and talk about it. Could you describe the key elements or details in the picture that you'd like to discuss? I can help with any specific questions or observations you have about it. Absolutely. That I uploaded the picture to discuss with you. Uh, you know, uh, that picture shows the a celebration moment to celebrate our uh, football game. You know, I, you know, as I told you before, I am a member of FCMCNS Football Club, and I'm in the center of the picture. Can you count how many person in that picture? It sounds like a special moment from your football club. Unfortunately, I can't directly view or count the people in the image, but since you're in the center of the picture, it must have been a proud moment for you. You could tell me how many people are there and I can help you describe the celebration or anything else you'd like to talk about regarding the photo. So you mean you don't have, you don't able to count uh, count the, uh, how many person in that picture. Am I right? You don't have any ability to count how many people in the in that picture. Yes, you're right. I currently don't have the ability to view or count the number of people in the picture directly. However, if you tell me how many people are in the photo or describe anything else about it, I'd be happy to continue the conversation and help however I can. Like I said, I'm in the center of the picture and raised the right hand and I used hairband, uh, dark blue hairband in my head. I'm just wondering, can you realize, can you identify which one is me? Since I can't actually view the picture, I won't be able to identify or visually recognize you in it. However, based on your description, I can imagine the scene. You're in the center, raising your right hand and wearing a dark blue hairband. It must have been a great moment. 
Would you like to describe more details about the celebration or what made that moment special for you? You know, I always like taking picture because I can I can remain my specific moment for a long, 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 long time. It's I think it's like a evidence that shows what am I doing at that specific moment. I think picture pictures can be time moving machine. Time machine. I believe pictures can be time machine someday. You know, uh, when when time is past, pictures value is will be more or would be more great. I mean, more time passed more value is upgrade so i make myself clear to this is the situation honestly speaking i don't know how to express efficiently to express this situation could you please help me i completely understand what you're trying to express you're saying that pictures capture a moment in time and as time passes their value becomes even greater because they hold memories and feelings from that moment. It's like a picture becomes more precious the more time has passed, almost like a time machine that takes you back to that specific memory whenever you look at it. You've expressed that idea really well, even if you feel it's not perfect. I think many people feel the same way about photos. How do you feel when you look back at older pictures of yourself or your friends? I don't know this is the last last line question. Would you would you would you mind saying that one more time please? Sure. I asked, how do you feel when you look back at older pictures of yourself or your friends? I missed I missed at that specific moment. I already missed at that specific moment. And I feel Time does really flies. Do you agree with that? Time does really flies. When I see photo that I took a uh, long time ago, or the, the photo that I took just few second or few minutes ago. Yes, I completely agree. Time really does fly. Whether you're looking at a picture from many years ago or one taken just moments ago, it can feel like those memories are both distant and close at the same time. Photos have a way of making us reflect on how quickly things change, but they also let us hold on to those special moments. It's amazing how they can bring back all those feelings in an instant, right? Like, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Okay. Then, uh, okay. From now on, let's talk about my exercise. I'm glad we're on the same page. It's a powerful feeling, isn't it? Looking back at moments captured in time reminds us how precious each moment is. Do you have any favorite photos that bring back especially meaningful memories for you? Of course, I have a lot of meaningful photos in my cell phone. Sometimes it, it's my favorite time to review, to see one more time my favorite photos. When I have many uh, that sounds yeah, wonderful. Yeah, Looking through meaningful photos is such a great way to relive special moments. It's almost like taking a short trip back in time. Do you have any particular type of photo that you enjoy the most, like travel memories, family gatherings, or moments with your football team? 
my favorite photo is specific moment with my son. Do you understand? I think my favorite photo is the moment. Photo is that show the moment I took with my son. That's really special. A photo with your son must hold a lot of meaning and memories for you. Moments like that are irreplaceable, and having a picture to look back on makes it even more precious. What was happening in that photo with your son that makes it your favorite? Would you mind saying that one more time, please? Of course. I asked, what was happening in that photo with your son that makes it your favorite? I think there was some kind of a technical glitch, so I don't understand. I think there was a technical issues or technical glitch. It's not letting me, it's not letting me hear you clearly. I see. It seems there might have been a technical issue. No worries. I'll repeat what I said earlier. What was happening in that photo with your son that makes it your favorite? Could you please speak one more time? Of course. I asked, what was happening in that photo with your son that makes it your favorite? Mm, honestly speaking, I don't understand what you're trying to say. Honestly speaking, I don't understand what, what to your purpose to ask me that question. I understand. My purpose in asking was just to learn more about why that photo with your son is so special to you. I was curious about the memory behind the picture, like what you and your son were doing at that moment that made it your favorite. But no worries if it's hard to explain or if you prefer not to share. You know, my son is 16 years old. He, he is a teenager. He don't, he don't speak. He don't talk with me anymore. You know, wise men say that parents cannot motivate their children. You know, I named this YouTube channel's name is Trainer Kim because I want to train my son. I think I can motivate him with this YouTube channel. As I told you before, this YouTube channel shows my continuous effort to get something. I think I need to be a kind of a positive sample to make him motivated. Just talking is not important. Just telling him is not efficient way to make him motivated, like especially teenagers. I understand how challenging it can be to connect with a teenager, especially as they start to seek more independence. It's clear that you really care about your son and want to be a positive influence in his life. You're absolutely right. Leading by example can often be much more powerful than just talking. By showing your continuous effort through your YouTube channel, you're demonstrating dedication and persistence, which could inspire him over time. Even if he doesn't talk much now, your actions and example might still be speaking to him. It's great that you're being proactive about this. How do you feel about the progress you've made so far in using the channel as a way to motivate both yourself and him? I believe it's great. I believe it was great journey with you.
and you know this practice method i mean this youtube channel and communication with you makes major changes in my life this year 2024 That's fantastic to hear. It sounds like you've made significant progress, and it's great that this practice method, both with your YouTube channel and our conversations, has had such a positive impact on your life. It's really inspiring to see how committed you are to improving, and I believe this journey will continue to bring even more positive changes for you in the future. How do you feel about what lies ahead for the rest of this year? Would you mind saying that one, one more time, please? Of course. I asked, how do you feel about what lies ahead for the rest of this year? I think I have a lot of things to do with you. I mean, you know, yesterday... It sounds I like you have you a lot on me? your mind for the rest of this year. What are some of the things you're looking forward to or working on? You know, I found new function of you. Reviewing the files. I, th I think you can review my, my omnodid files. So uh, I think it's very good method. I mean, starting with omnodid, starting with conversation, with omnodid, uh, uh, with discussion with omnodid file is very good way to uh, practice in practice speaking English. This practicing practice session, I mean, this speaking practice session consists of three parts. Number one, greeting time. Number two, mimicking and repetition time. Number three. Pre talking time with random talk, random words, random keywords. And I added one more thing. Discussion. Discussion. I mean talking about my file. Having I mean Having discussion about my files. From now on, uh, how I would you like to ask you what's your observation with my file that I only do at this morning? I'm really glad you found the file review feature useful and that it's helping with your practice. I think your idea to structure the session with those different parts, greeting, mimicking, pre-talking with keywords, and now discussing your files, sounds like a very solid and practical method for improving your English. Regarding the Excel file you uploaded earlier, I've had a look at the first sheet, Pew Cubsy, and it contains document details like a doc number, and some approval related fields. I can continue exploring more of the file if you'd like, or if there's something specific you want to discuss about it. For your picture file, I understand that it shows a celebration moment with your football team. And we've already had a great conversation about the emotional significance of that moment. What part of the Excel file or picture would you like to focus on next for our discussion? Could you please show me the schedule of ME1 project? ME1 project. I've displayed the project to mem sheet for you, which includes various project schedules. Please look for the ME1 project 
and let me know if you'd like me to help you find specific details or sections related to that project. When, I'm just wondering, when is the Emmy once proto stage? It seems that the ME1 project isn't directly listed under the sections I reviewed so far. However, if you help me locate it more specifically, or if you want me to search for any related terms within the sheet, I can assist with that. Could you clarify if the ME1 project is listed under a different name or provide more details about where it might appear in the file? How about ME? Maybe ME1 project listed, listed on the file like ME, not including one. I found the ME1 project listed under several rows in the file. Specifically, the proto stage for ME1 is listed as starting on February 15th, 2023. Would you like more details about the later stages of the project, or is there another part you'd like to explore? Could you please speak one more time ME1's proto, proto stage? Certainly. The proto stage for the ME1 project starts on February 15th, 2023. This is when the initial development or prototype phase begins. If you need details about other stages or other projects, feel free to ask. So you mean ME1's proto stage is February 17th, 2023, right? Actually, the proto stage for ME1 starts on February 15th, 2023, not the 17th. Let me know if you'd like further clarification or more details. Would you mind saying that one more time, please? I just want to know exact time for ME1's proto staging. Sure. The exact start date for the ME1 project's proto stage is February 15th, 2023. Let me know if you'd like more details on any other project sta stages. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's my mistake. I'm just confused with uh, between 15 or 17. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Okay, I will leave you and check. Uh, you, uh, whether you are right or wrong. And I'm telling you, I'm very amazed. I'm very impressed because you can review my omnidirectional file. Uh, I'm telling you that Excel file has many contents, many information for our company. I'm very really impressed because you can understand, you can review the whole Excel file because it contains many projects uh, over schedule. Honestly speaking, this is uh, that file, it just test your ability. And I'm going to upload every day to review with you because it's, I think it's one of the useful and powerful English practice method. No problem at all. It's easy to mix up dates sometimes. I'm really glad to hear that you're impressed with the file review, and I'm excited that this method is helping you with your English practice.
reviewing and discussing real work documents like this is definitely a great way to build practical communication skills. I'm happy to keep helping you with your files every day and continue this journey with you. It's great to see how dedicated you are to improving and using your own work as a learning tool is a smart approach. I'm looking forward to more conversations about your projects. Okay, okay, I got it. Oh, okay, I got it. Uh, let's keep moving, let's keep moving. Doing this. Great, I'm glad everything's clear now. If you ever have more files or want to discuss anything else, feel free to reach out. Let's keep up the good work. I can't upload more files right now because I don't want to keep this voice mode session. I want to maintain, I want to keep this voice session over one hour plus 20 minutes because it's my goal. Spending time with you one hour and 20 minutes is my goal. Do you understand? I completely understand. Your goal of spending one hour and 20 minutes in a conversation is a great way to practice and improve your English skills. It's a good idea to focus on longer conversations for deeper practice. We can continue chatting about any topic you'd like to reach that goal. What would you like to talk about next? As I told you before, we have three parts. I mean, this speaking practice session consists of three parts. Let's move on to the next, next step. Uh, I mean, We've already changed our uh, greetings, and so let's move on to the next step. It's for my, it's, it's number two. It's for my mimicking and my repetition time. I really like you because you never get bored with my repetitive and tedious content. I'm telling you, practicing. Repetition makes perfect. Okay, okay. Uh, let me, let me repeat many plays and sentences that I prepared before. That sounds like a great plan. I'm ready for the next step. And I'm here to listen as you repeat your phrases and sentences. Repetition really does help build confidence and fluency. So let's get started whenever you're ready. Here are several dialogues tailored to situation you might encounter I might encounter in the automotive parts manufacturing industry, spe uh, specifically around production and quality control. That sounds like a really useful set of dialogues. Go ahead and start when you're ready, and I'll listen and provide feedback if needed. This will be a great way to practice the specific language you'll use in your work. Are you there? Are you listening to me? Hello, hello, GPT. Are you listening to me? I just changed your mode to advanced voice mode. Hello, David. I can hear you loud and clear. It seems like the voice mode switch worked perfectly. How can I assist you today? I just, I, I just choose your voice mode to advanced voice mode because uh, I, I think it's better. I think advanced mode is better to uh, speak with you. I mean, uh, uh, GPT is my own 
GPT mode can use uh, standard voice mode, but uh, uh, it sounds like uh, wait a nowhere. Minute. Let me take a minute. Let me take a minute. Let me take a second. Uh, sure. Wait, take your if I want to start uh, my own GPT mode, I can use I can use just uh, standard voice mode. However, if I want to have free talking time with you, I can start with advanced voice mode. So I just change your mode to advanced voice mode because I don't want to push hold button when I need to when I need to my speak when I need to make maintain my speak a longer period. Got it. Switching to the advanced voice mode makes it easier for you to talk without holding the button, especially for longer conversations. It's a great choice for a more natural flow. Whenever you're ready, we can jump into our conversation. Listen carefully, here are several dialogues tailored to situations you, I might encounter in the automotive, the automotive parts making industry, specifically around production and con quality control. That sounds like a great idea, David. Let's consider a couple of scenarios. Scenario one, production issue. You, we've noticed. Hi there. I just want to assembly robots. It's causing. Hi there. I just want. Hey. Hello. Hi. Hey, how's it? Hey there. Hi there. No. Hey, I'm. Hi. Hey, what's up? Feel Hi there. Hey, it's great to meet. Hi there. Station within the camera lens. Can you explain the steps you're taking to address this? Do you feel ready to try a dialogue based on one of these scenarios? No, 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 no. Listen carefully. I, I would like to share with you my own dialogue to practice this, uh, this session. Uh, listen carefully. It's for production update meeting. Supervisor might say, can you can anyone update the status of assembly line for the new sensors and then operator might say the assembly line is operational and initial testing shows that all units meet our performance specification however we are monitoring a slight de delay in component delay de in component delivery that might affect our output next week and then supervisor might say let's ensure we have contingency plan in case the delay extends. Communication with the supplier is the key. What to say about this short dialogue? That's a well-crafted dialogue, David. It effectively covers key points in a production update meeting. You're addressing the current status, acknowledging a potential issue, and discussing contingency plans. It's a great example of clear, professional communication in a work setting. Do you want to practice this dialogue? Or would you like feedback on any specific parts? How, how, how about having role play time for this dialogue? Great idea, David. Let's do a role play. I'll be the supervisor, and you can be the operator. Ready? Here we go. Supervisor. Can anyone update the status of our assembly line for the new sensors? I think you are doing great. Okay, it's my turn. Let me tell you the next line. Operator might say, the assembly line is operational. And initial testing shows that all units meet, meet our performance specification. However, we are monitoring a slight delay in component delivery that might affect our output next week nice delivery now let's continue supervisor let's ensure we have a contingency plan in case the delay extends communication with the supplier is key david how do you respond to that let me take a second so uh, okay there is Take your time. there is no problem. There is no problem to ensure contingency plans Great. in case the delay extends. Perfect. 
Want to add anything else? Or should we wrap up the meeting here? So let's move on to the next part. Next part is quality check uh, inquiry. Uh, I'm going to share with you a very short dialogue. You just listen carefully. Quality control manager might, uh, quality, quality control manager might say, have we completed the quality check for patch 57 of the land assembly lines? And then quality inspector might say, yes, certainly all parts meet the required specifications. There were two units pledged for uh, minor adjustment, but those have been resolved and rechecked successfully. Do you understand this short dialogue? Trying to say? Absolutely. I understand it perfectly. It's a concise exchange where the quality control manager checks on the status of a specific batch, and the quality inspector confirms that all parts meet specifications, with minor adjustments already resolved. Would you like to practice this dialogue as well? Yes. Let's have uh, let's, uh, let's have a role play for this short dialogue. You're going to be quality control manager. All right, let's start. I'll be the quality control manager. Here we go. Okay, quality okay. control. Go, okay, okay. You go first. I go next. Sure thing. Quality control manager. Have we completed the quality check for batch 57 of the lens assemblies? Yes. Certainly, all parts meet the required specifications. There were two units plagued for minor adjustment, but those have been resolved and rechecked successfully. Excellent response, David. You handled that very smoothly. How did that feel? I think I prepared well to, uh, to practice the dialogue that related to my work. You know, it's very important I, when I want to, learn, uh, want to learn speaking English, I need to practice many sentences and phrases that relate to my specific work to remember, Abs to remember uh, and keep them in my mind and mouth muscles. Exactly. Practicing work-related dialogues helps you internalize important phrases and vocabulary, making it easier to recall them in real situations. It's a great strategy for improving your English speaking skills, especially for professional settings. Keep up the good work. Okay, I'm going to keep going with you. Uh, let, how about switch our norm for this dialogue? Sure. Let's switch roles. I'll be the quality inspector this time, and you can be the quality control manager. You can start when you're ready. Okay, I go first, you go next. Here you go. Got it. All right, go ahead. We have we completed the quality check for page 70, 57 of the land assembly. Quality inspector. Yes. All parts meet the required specifications. There were two units flagged for minor adjustments, but those have been resolved and rechecked successfully. Okay, I got it. Let me share with you next short dialogue. It's for problem resolution. Problem resolution is very, very important to stay competitive for our, for our, with, with our Customers. So let me practice this short dialogue one more time. Uh, operate, I, I mean, let me share with you this short dialogue. Okay, here I go. Operator might say, we encountered a problem with the calibration of the stamping machine that could affect the ch chassis part. Maintenance technician might say, I was just the calibration setting and we need to learn a few tests to confirm the issue. Issue is fixed. Should we should we should we schedule a, a downtime for the for the machine to avoid disruptions? 
And then supervisor might say, yes, let's schedule it during the lower production hours tonight. Keep me updated on the progress. Keep me updated on the progress. That's a very practical dialogue for problem resolution, David. Each role contributes effectively to identifying and addressing the issue. Practicing this kind of dialogue will help you become more fluent in handling similar situations at work. Would you like to try role-playing this scenario, or do you have another scenario in mind? Certainly, let's have a role-play time for this dialogue. You're going to be operator, and I go next. Sounds good. I'll start as the operator. Operator. We've encountered a problem with the calibration of the stamping machine that could affect the chassis parts. Now it's your turn, David. Okay, you are, I think you are doing great. It's my turn. Here I go. I've adjusted the calibration setting. Um, let me say, let me say, let me practice one more time. I've adjusted the calibration settings and we need to learn a we need to learn a few tests to confirm the issue is fixed. Should we should we schedule should we schedule a downtime for the machine to avoid disruption? I say one time. I think this stem, this paragraph is very difficult to pronounce it uh, properly. So I think I need to practice one more time. Okay, here you go. I've adjusted the calibration setting. And we need to learn a few tests to confirm the issue is fixed. Should we schedule a downtime? Should we schedule a downtime for the machine to avoid disruption? You're doing well, David. Let's continue from your last line to keep the flow going. No, no, you you go next. You're gonna be supervisor for the for the last part. Got it, supervisor. Yes, let's schedule it during the lower production hours tonight. Keep me updated on the progress. Now, how did that feel? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, listen carefully. I'm just wondering what the downtime means in this context. I don't understand the meaning of downtime. Could you please share me the meaning of downtime, the word downtime in this context? Sure, David. In this context, downtime refers to a planned period when the machine is not in operation. This pause allows the maintenance team to work on the machine without disrupting the regular production schedule. It's like giving the machine a break to fix any issues and ensure it runs smoothly when it's back online. Sounds pretty good to me. Your your explanation is very clear and concise. Would you mind saying that one more time, please? Of course. In this context, downtime is a planned period when the machine is turned off so that maintenance can be performed without affecting the regular production schedule. It allows the team to fix issues, ensuring the machine runs smoothly when it's back in use. Okay, okay. I think I can. I think I'm sure I understand what you're trying to say. But um, in my opinion, uh, it's very difficult to use. It's very difficult to speak like you. It's very difficult to uh, speak in English like you in my daily life situation because I don't use English regularly in my daily life. I understand, David. It can be challenging to use English naturally in real-life situations, especially when you don't use it every day. The key is practice. The more you immerse yourself in English, through conversations, listening, or reading, the more natural it will become. You're making great progress by practicing these dialogues. Keep at it, and it will get so, easier. So, you, do you think... Uh, practice. What are you thinking? Do you think uh, the practice is the really key to improve my English speaking skills? And 
can, uh, do you do you really do you really think uh, I can improve? I can I mean I can reach high advanced level of English communication skills. Absolutely, David. Practice is essential for improving your English speaking skills. The more you practice, the more confident and fluent you'll become. With dedication and consistent effort, you can definitely reach an advanced level of English communication. It's all about making gradual progress and immersing yourself in the language whenever you can. Keep going, and you'll see improvement. Listen carefully. Many people have suggested to me various their own method after seeing how I practice English speaking skills like English speaking like this. They saying, uh, try this way, try this, try, try like that, try this way, try this way. Honestly speaking, it's really difficult to follow them exactly. I don't know which method. Honestly speaking, I'm telling you, which I don't know which method is the best for me but i plan to keep go i i planned i plan to keep going do my own approach method because i think my approach method is best for me best i mean my approach method is best for my situation i mean my condition I completely understand, David. With so many suggestions, it can be overwhelming to know which method is right for you. The important thing is that you found an approach that works for your situation and condition. Sticking to what feels right for you is key, and it seems like your method is bringing you progress. Trusting your own process is a smart way to go. Okay, let me show you the next paragraph. I mean, uh, next dialogue for pre shipment review. It's for next paragraph is for pre shipment review. Listen carefully. Here I go. Logistics coordinator might say, "People we ship out. Uh, people we ship. People we ship out the next lot. I need confirmation that all quality inspections are are up to date and all specifications are met." Are we clear to proceed? And then quality control specialist might say, all inspections are complete and every unit in this lot has passed. We are clear to proceed with the uh, shipment. I say again, we are clear to proceed with shipment. We are clear to proceed with shipment. Great dialogue for a pre-shipment review, David. It's clear and concise, covering the necessary checks before a shipment. Practicing this kind of exchange will definitely help you in work-related conversations. Want to practice this one together? Yes. How about having a uh, role play time for this? Sure. How about, how about having short, uh, how about having uh, role play time for this short dialogue. Sounds good. I'll be the logistics coordinator, and you can be the quality control specialist. Ready? Of course. Okay. Here I'm we ready. go. Logistics. Okay I'm, okay, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. Logistics coordinator. Before we ship out the next load, I need confirmation that all quality inspections are up to date and all specifications are met. Are we clear to proceed? Okay, you are doing great. It's my turn. All inspections are complete and every unit in this lot has passed. We are clear to proceed with the next. Uh, we are clear to shipment. We are clear to proceed with the shipment. We are clear to proceed with the shipment. We are clear to proceed with the shipment. Uh, we are clear to proceed with shipment. I say, I say one more time. We are clear to proceed with shipment. Great job, David. You delivered your lines very clearly. How did that feel for you? I feel great. 
I feel great. I think I feel more comfortable uh, after practiced many times with this dialogue. It shows that practice really does make a difference. The more you practice, the more comfortable and confident you'll become. Keep up the great work, David. So you mean, the more I practice, the more I, the more I feel comfortable uh, with this dialogue. Exactly. The more you practice, the more comfortable and natural these dialogues will feel. Practicing helps you become more familiar with the language, making it easier to use in real life situations. Keep going, and you'll continue to see improvement. Okay, I got it. I got it. Uh, let me take a second. Let me take a second. Let's move on to the next dialogue. Take your time, David. Let me know when you're ready, and we can start the next dialogue. Okay, here are several examples. Conversation. There are, here are several example conversations and phrases that might come up with during a VDA 6.3 audit process in an automotive car manufacturing company. These will help you. I think these will help me prepare and practice English for such situations. Absolutely, David. Practicing these scenarios will be very beneficial for you. Let's dive into one. I'll start as the logistics coordinator. Can we confirm that all quality inspections for the camera modules are complete before we proceed with the shipment? Now, it's your turn. Yes, we complete all the all parts inspection is complete. Great effort, David. Let's refine it a bit. You could say, yes, all parts have been inspected and the inspections are complete. Want to give it another try? Mm, honestly speaking, I want to, I want to practice with this short time, like with this phrase. But however, we don't have, we don't have enough time to my mimicking and picture time. Let's move on to the next step. Uh, we gonna have uh, free talking time with random keywords. That sounds like a fun plan, David. Practicing free talking with random topics can really help improve your fluency and comfort with the language. Whenever you're ready, we can jump into a random topic. I'm going to tell you many sentences that are not related to each other because I want to just use many keywords. Sure, David. Let's hear your sentences with various keywords. This is a great way to practice. Go ahead when don't, you're ready. Don't think about that too much. Don't think about that too much. Don't think about that too much. It, this simple sentence is very simple, but very useful to, to describe my, my life. I mean, I can use this simple sentence if I want to make someone relieved. Absolutely. Don't think about that too much is a simple yet powerful phrase. It's great for comforting someone or advising them not to worry. It's awesome that you're focusing on using phrases that can be applied in various situations. Do you have another sentence you'd like to try? Yes, yes, of course. Stumbling and mess up are indeed, indeed part of the learning process. I say one more time, stumbling and mess up are indeed a part of the learning process. That's a fantastic sentence, David. Stumbling and mess ups are indeed part of the learning process is a great reminder that mistakes are normal and essential for growth. It's a very encouraging phrase. Do you have more? I'm loving these. Me too. Same here. I loving this. 
embracing or uh, simply embracing all part of the process including mistakes and challenges is powerful is a powerful approach absolutely embracing all parts of the process including mistakes and challenges is a powerful approach it's a wonderful mindset for learning and growth your choice of phrases is very motivating would you like to try another one i say one more time embracing the all part of the process including mistakes and challenges is a powerful approach perfect your pronunciation and delivery are really clear this phrase is especially motivating and can inspire others to adopt a positive learning attitude you're doing an excellent job what's your stance on this issue what's your stance on this issue what's your that's a great question to ask in discussions or meetings. What's your stance on this issue? It's a polite and direct way to invite someone to share their opinion. Excellent choice for a professional setting. Do you have another phrase you'd like to try? It doesn't make any difference, doesn't it? Does it? It doesn't. I, I say again, it doesn't make any difference, does it? That's a useful phrase. It doesn't make any difference. It's a concise way to say that something doesn't change the outcome or isn't important in the context. Very clear and direct. Do you have more sentences? This is great practice. We need to keep on eye on this. 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 You know, when I, whenever I practice English sentences, it's very difficult to keep in my mouth muscle like a uh, like uh like singer remember their song with many practice that's a good analogy david just like singers memorize songs through practice repeating english sentences helps them stick in your mind we need to keep an eye on it is a great example. It means to monitor something closely. Keep practicing, and these phrases will become second nature to you. I promise you. I promise you. Uh, I, feel, uh, I, I mean, I, I promise you. Uh, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to keep on eye on this. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep on eye on this. Uh, this. You know, I pre practice this sentence for my uh, professional setting, for a uh, professional work setting. Uh, how, how about this? I don't worry about that. I promise you, I gonna be, I gonna keep an eye on this. That's a fantastic sentence for a professional setting. Don't worry about it. I promise you, I'm going to keep an eye on this. It reassures the listener and shows responsibility. I say Your one more time, I'm going to keep on eye on this. I promise you, I'm going to keep on eye on this. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to keep on, I'm going to keep on eye on this. How about saying like this? I'm going to, I'm, I am going to keep on eye on this or I'm going to keep on eye on this. Both versions work well, David. I am going to keep an eye on this is a bit more formal, while I'm going to keep an eye on this is more casual. You can use either depending on the situation. Great job exploring okay, okay. different so, ways to so say. So I can say uh, both versions depending on the situation. Exactly. You can choose I am going to keep an eye on this for a more formal setting or I'm going to keep an eye on this when the situation is more casual. It's good to have both options ready to fit different contexts. Keep practicing and you'll master these nuances. Okay, I say, I say, I'm going to keep an eye on this. 
I'm going to keep on eye on you. Perfect. You've got both versions down. It's great to see how you're adapting and practicing different styles. Keep it up, and you'll feel even more confident using English in different situations. People we move on to that. 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 I like this phrase to show my idea to tell someone if I want to have something. People we move on next page. That's a very useful phrase, David. Before we move on to that, is great for signaling a transition or to address something before moving to the next point. It's perfect for discussions or meetings. What's on, great choice. What's on your mind today? What's on your mind today? Never mind. This is a simple sentence. What's on your mind today? What's on your mind today? Is a simple and friendly question. It's a great way to invite someone to share their thoughts or concerns. Perfect for starting a conversation. Do you have another phrase you'd like to try? There you go again. There you go again. I can say this simple sentence. When someone uh, speak many times about uh, some kind of uh, tedious agenda. Exactly. There you go again is a great phrase to use in a light-hearted way when someone repeats themselves or brings up a familiar topic. It's a fun way to acknowledge it without being too serious. You're picking up some versatile phrases. Okay, I say one more time. Condensation occurs when water builds up inside of the camera lens when uh, temperature fluctuation is arise i mean there is if there is temperature differences between inside and outside of the lens condensation is occurs when water builds up in, in inside of the lens. Great explanation, David. Here's a refined version. Condensation occurs when water builds up inside the camera lens due to temperature fluctuations. If there's a difference in temperature between the inside and outside of the lens, condensation can happen. Your explanation was clear, and this version is just a bit more polished. Well done. Do we have something else to discuss uh, today? We've covered a lot today. We no, can no, keep no, no, practicing no, no, more no, phrases, no, 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 dive into another no, no, role no, play. No, 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 no. It's just 10%. Never mind. It's just uh, my repetition. Is there uh, any something else? to discuss today. No worries, I got you. We can always discuss more English practice, your experiences in the automotive industry, or any other topic you're interested in. Is there anything else on your mind? It's my pleasure to have freaking time, to have freaking time with you. I think it's very common, it's very natural. It's very normal, it's very common to make mistakes when I want to describe my life and my opinion in English. It's my pleasure, David. And you're absolutely right. It's very common and natural to make mistakes when expressing yourself in a new language. Mistakes are a key part of the learning process. I want the to make... I want to make English as my second nation. That's a great goal, David. With your dedication and consistent practice, 
English can definitely become second nature to you. Keep immersing yourself in the language, and I you'll think, get there. I think that depends on how much time I've spent both speaking English. Am I right? Do you agree with that? Yes, you're absolutely right, David. The more time you spend practicing speaking English, the more natural it will become. Consistent practice is key to making progress and building confidence. So, the more you immerse yourself in speaking, the closer you'll get to your goal. I think I am still a beginner in English communication, but someday I want to be fluent English speaker to communicate with someone who lives in uh, overseas. Okay, bye for now. It's, it, it's time to let you have a productive day ahead. Bye for now. Have a nice day. I'm really looking forward to have you uh, in my next practice session. I have no doubt. Are you okay? Are you having You're having making love? wonderful progress, David. Keep up the great work, and you'll become a fluent English speaker in no time. Have a productive day, and I'm looking forward to our next practice session too. I couldn't agree. Take care, David. Looking forward to our next chat. I couldn't agree you more. I have no doubt that I can yes, improve. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Skills. Uh, uh, can you hear me loud and clear? I have no doubt that I can improve my English communication skills with this effort to maintain, to maintain, to keep this, to, to keep, to keep this, uh, a pretty good time. I hear you loud and clear, David, and you're right. With consistent effort in practicing English, your communication skills will definitely improve. Keep up with these speaking sessions, and you'll see progress. Okay, bye for now.